This video is supported by patrons like you. If you'd like to become a patron, please head over to patreon.com forward slash Matt Jarbo. Just a dollar per month is a great way to say F you to the access media. I don't think Warner Brothers, Todd Phillips, Joaquin Phoenix had any idea that Joker would do as well as it did. I don't think they had one inkling of an idea that it would pull in the amount of money that it did. The movie right now, currently, is the highest grossing R-rated movie of all time, beating out Deadpool 2 at this moment by just a couple million dollars, but it's still the highest grossing R-rated movie of all time. And that is wild. This $65 million budgeted movie, this, 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 I don't even call it a micro budget, but this mid budget character study of the clown prince of crime somehow captivated audiences enough to go on to gross over 785.6 million with estimates, putting it up and over 900 million by the time it ends this box office run. Some people some people you will see even probably in the comment section of this video are going to say, let's get it to a billion. Let's keep going. Let's keep seeing it. And I just I, I'm kind of like I'm I'm taken aback by the fact it did that. Uh, it's a great movie. It's a fantastic movie. It, it's it's unnerving. It's unsettling. It feels almost dangerous. And that's probably why it did as well as it did. The controversy surrounding the movie only helped amplify it. I mean, Warner Brothers, they couldn't have asked for a better marketing uh, uh, tactic than the access media going after the movie, claiming that it's going to become uh, the, 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 the next reason why we have another attack in this country, claiming that someone is going to be inspired by this to go out and then to hurt people. Like That's what they wanted to happen ultimately. And they did too. You could tell if they were, they were pushing it so hard. This is what they wanted to have happen. And, and any of them out there saying the opposite, uh, I think is full of crap because they never came out and apologized for attacking the movie. And that's how, you know, but I really do feel that the movie, uh, did well for a number of reasons. One, it's release date was, was good. It was October. There was really nothing coming out right around it. There was a, a lot of movies got out of its way. The hype was pretty high because it was a, a, a very seriously, taken property you know todd phillips pitched the movie to warner brothers back in 2016 they kept saying no 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 and he kept pushing kept pushing kept pushing got joaquin phoenix involved they kept not wanting to do it because they, they wanted a part of the dceu and then uh and then they gave him 65 million dollars they, they they budgeted for it and they said well look, we'll give you 65 million or 55 million depending on who you talk to and uh you know, they hoped he wasn't going to do it. They hoped he thought that was too small of a budget and he wasn't going to go out and do it. And he went out to go do it. And now it's the highest grossing R-rated movie of all time. That's going to be as profitable to Warner Brothers as Avengers in, uh, Endgame was to Disney. Think about that. Endgame, 2.79 or whatever billion dollars, roughly 2.8 billion uh, it, worldwide is going to pull in profit profitability wise about as much as Joker for Warner Brothers. And what I hope comes out of this, what I really hope comes out of this whole thing is that Warner Brothers looks at Joker and other studios look at Joker and they look at the success of Deadpool and they go, you know what? We can do this. We can do these mid-budget films that are very character oriented, very character driven, character focused, put it out there and the audience will respond. We can make them R rated and they have a, they have a high tendency of pulling in a fair amount of cash. The problem that studios face right now is how do you compete with things like Marvel, especially other Marvel properties, you know, like Captain Marvel, a movie that grossed $1.1 billion. I still don't know how. Uh, gross more money than Deadpool 2. How did that happen? Well, I mean, there's a lot of factors that went into it. Probably because, for one, it was uh, there was a slingshot effect leading up to Endgame. Actually, that was probably the major one. Uh, and it was another entry into a grander saga. And, uh, and there were people who liked it. There were people who liked it. It actually ended up doing a fair amount of business uh, the, when, when Endgame opened, I think it was uh, that one pulled in like an additional 8 million or something like Captain Marvel was number two at the box office uh, that weekend for whatever reason. But not everything is going to pull in the money Captain Marvel makes. I just want to point that out there. But, but there are better movies in Captain Marvel that should get that kind of cash that uh, are these mid-budget films. And that is honestly probably what DC is going to focus on. 
That's probably what uh, the Fox brand of Marvel movies are going to focus on. The R-rated movies that are going to focus on a smaller budget. That's going to be more character driven and hoping that that can be used as a way uh, to, to make a lot of money. I would say that if these companies want to start pulling in the kind of cash that Joker's doing, because they're all paying attention right now and expect that to happen over the course of the next couple of weeks, is to start hearing rumors and murmurs and rumblings about R-rated comic book movies. Because we've been asking for them for years. I mean, we got lucky with a couple of them, Blade, 21 years ago. R-rated. No one ever gives out the credit it deserves, right? No one ever gives Blade the credit it deserves for paving the way for something like Joker. Because it did. It really, really, really did. The Blade trilogy, good or bad. First one's amazing. Second one's amazing. Third one's... I like parts of it. Uh, it paved the way for, for these kind of movies to be made. But they were made uh, very well. And that, again, is what people want. You can tell a comic book story, but just tell it with a good, good director and a good cast and treat it seriously and you'll make money. Uh, audiences can tell when something is a hollow cash grab and they they oftentimes will discuss it. They will they will talk about it or they won't go see it. People, I think, did the same thing with Solo. They looked at Solo as a soulless cash grab, a soloist cash grab. And they avoided it because no one really asked for it. No one felt that it really kind of moved the needle forward. What we need are more comic book properties that are R-rated, darker, deeper, and that move the needle, push a discussion, and have thought-provoking scripts, oftentimes very reflective of the thought-provoking comics that preceded them. I would argue that if Marvel really wants to take it to the next level, look at the themes that Stan Lee and Jack Kirby exposed or espoused when they were working on X-Men. The themes of, of racial division and, and what they were based off of and really what sold that to an audience at the time. Mirror it to today's politics in, in an apolitical way. Give it a medium, a, a medium grade budget. Put the right filmmaker in there, which is Kevin Feige, I think is really good at doing. Uh, try to move away from a bit of the homogenized aspect of it. And uh, and then really just tell one of these stories that actually has the ability to make its way towards the Best Picture nomination. Because I'm sorry, I don't believe Black Panther deserved the nomination last year. I think it was uh, a new batch of people at the Academy uh, in, in an attempt to be more uh, diverse and inclusive, which I have nothing against. I thought Black Panther was a fine movie. But you could tell that they just wanted to give Black Panther the win or at least give it the nominations in order to prove a point or to push a message or something. It wasn't natural. It didn't feel like it was natural. Natural, which is why really not a lot of people supported it winning. Now, I will say one for costumes and it did do well with costumes. Anyway, I'm kind of all over the place on this one. All I'm saying is congrats to Warners. Congrats to Todd Phillips. Congrats to Joaquin Phoenix. You pulled in uh, more money than anyone ever thought possible. And you did it during a time when Endgame was the highest grossing film of all time just a few months earlier. Going to show you that people want options. And they are absolutely fundamentally willing to pay for them if they are good, taken seriously, and the audience isn't talked down to. Anyway, your thoughts, your opinions, let me know down in the comments below. I will talk to you all later. Have yourself a fantastic day. My name is Matt Jarbo. Follow me on social media and uh, hit that subscribe and peace out.